you are ready to speak with an agent, say ready. Or if you no longer need to speak with someone, ready. And want to keep okay. At the conclusion of your call, we would like you to participate in a short survey and tell us about your experience. If you would like to participate in the survey, please stay on the line after the agent hangs up. Good afternoon, Social Security, where we offer online services. My name is Tawanda. How can I help you today? Yes, hello. For quality assurance purposes, this recording, this conversation is being recorded. Uh, how are you today? I'm doing well with yourself. I am perfect. Thank you for asking. Uh, so, um, the other day I called up your office and uh, I got, a, I got a, a man who told me that um, your office does not accept power of attorneys for... Yeah, we have our form of power of attorney as a uh, representative payee. Okay, so... The issue here that I have is that the power of attorney that I have, um, that someone has signed over to me, um, is under Pennsylvania Code, Chapter 56, Section 5603, Part T, which is the power to receive government benefits. Uh, and I'm just going to read this um, law to you. Um, in Pennsylvania, and which of course is effective here because of, you know, the, the legal stuff. Um, a power to receive government benefits shall mean that the agent may prepare, sign, and file any claim or application for social security, unemployment, military service, or other government benefits. So the law actually specifically says that if I am granted the power to receive government benefits, which I have, I can actually make a request for a social security um, number application um, for my principal. An, an application for a claim for benefits, you mean? Uh, not a claim for benefits, just a, an SS-5. Oh, yes, any, anyone can request that. Yes, sir. So, uh, if I have a power of attorney with the power to receive govern, government benefits, I can actually request uh, or, or may submit an SS-5 for my principal, yes? Uh, let me check and see if you can submit that. Give me one moment. I'll be right with you. Thank you for your patience. Of course. Okay, so as long as you can um, show, and you would have to submit with the SS-5, um, um, an identity document for the, for the person you are um, applying for, as well as evidence of your relationship to that person, or evidence that you have custody or, or ability to apply for this person, and that would have to be submitted to the local the local office would decide based on the documents that you have submitted if they can order that request. Okay. So what kinds of requirements are there for uh, documentation of the agent of the principal in applying? Other than, you know, say, um, the, the documentation for, for the person, uh, the power of attorney, of course, uh, uh, which is kind of what you're sideways referring to, and then what kind of, like I said, what kind of documentation does the agent need to provide? And is the, is the uh, person that you're the power of attorney for, are they physically or mentally unable to request it on their own behalf? Yes. Okay. You would have to any documentation of that. If you can be um, the zip code you're looking to apply for, I could contact the office there and see exactly uh, what you would have to bring with you. Okay, well, I uh, I thought that this was, is this the office? Because this is... No, this is the um, national 1-800 number. Okay, okay, this I is... I the number you were dialing. Um, I'm sorry, go ahead.
Fantastic. Thank you. I will call up the local office and find out any of the more specific requirements that they have for uh, documentation behind uh, or to support the um, the agent and their identity regarding the power of attorney and their relationship to the power of attorney and the person applying. Um, one last question for you before I let you go. Um, yesterday, I called up, uh, was it, yet? well, um, maybe it wasn't yesterday, but the last business day, uh, or one of the last business days, um, I called up your office, uh, and I have a recording um, of one of your colleagues trying to convince me that your, the Social Security Administration does not accept power of attorneys. In fact, and in law, he was literally practice it, it was the, he was illicitly practicing law by telling me that this power of attorney was was you know ineffective or doesn't work and then he hung up on me because he was so flustered by the fact that um he 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 had to he had to accept it and you know he couldn't tell me how he couldn't and one of the things i want to point out here is that earlier in the conversation you specifically said that the Social Security Administration office does not accept power of attorneys, which again, you and the Social Security Administration office is in this recording practicing law when you do not have a license. Now, I have to ask you this. In order to support your claims before that the Social Security Administration office does not accept power of attorneys, I'm going to need your bar member membership number. I don't have one, sir. All right. So you, your office is here by... This is your constructive notice that you have to cease and desist deceiving people regarding power of attorneys. This is your notice. Notice to principal is notice to agent. Notice to agent is notice to principal. All of your bosses are heretofore noticed. It is your job and your responsibility at this point in time to inform your boss and have them inform their bosses and up the chain, so on and so forth, that they are no longer allowed to say and practice law such that the Social Security Administration does not accept power of attorneys. Do you understand this? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. I will be contacting. I, I will be contacting the local the local office here and the Social Security Administration office here to make sure that uh, that they are informed as well. Now I I will give you 24 hours to contact the Social Security Administration office and make sure that they are informed that they are required by law to accept power of attorney before I call them. Tomorrow, around this time, I will call them, and if they tell me that they do not accept power of attorney, then I will know that you are not doing your job and is actually acting as criminals. Well, well sir, that, that's not part of my job. My job yes, your job is to inform your, your bosses of this, and they will then do their job, all right? You said you understand this. You have already said you understand this. Any further... Silence is consent on this issue. Okay, you are here to for telling your boss, do not take any more phone calls. Tell your boss that they have to accept power of attorneys and they have to let every other office know this and be informed because of this constructive notice. This phone call has been recorded. It is a pleasure conducting business with you today. Thank you so much. Um, have a nice rest of the week. Bye. Bye.